see that. All right, hello, my name is Nina Campo, and I'm here today with Amea Dupre, who is in the Nevada City, Grass Valley area in California, and we are going to talk about the wonders of postpartum Abhyanga. So Amea, could you please tell us a little bit about your background in Ayurvedic postpartum care and massage and how you got into this work? Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so I started my Ayurvedic training in 2000, um, with Alakananda Ma from Al Alandi Ayurvedic Guru Kula. And I was pretty young at that time. I was 20 years old. Um, and I did my training um, in being a Panchakarma therapist uh, at first. And so during that time, in the middle of my training, I actually had my baby, Sarai. And so I was a young mama and I had some Ayurvedic training by the time I had her, but I definitely didn't have enough. And I also didn't have any training whatsoever for postpartum. And my birth was um, pretty difficult. And I wish that I had more resources than I did, um, but it is what it is and you know, gives me a lot to work with now for mamas and my own personal experience. But so I, I first did Abhyanga back then in you know, 2000, 2001. And that's how I started my experiences with Abhyanga was with uh, Panchakarma, which is the Ayurvedic detoxification process that involves Abhyanga massage and other lovely treatments as well as not so lovely treatments. Um, so I was a Panchakarma, I still am a Panchakarma therapist, but that was what I focused on for many years. And um, when I had my baby, I actually was friends with an Ayurveda. And about three weeks postpartum, she came and gave me probably the second massage of my life, which was an Ayurvedic postpartum massage. And I mean, it was absolutely incredible. And this particular person is an incredible healer as well, but it was amazing experience. And I believe that most mothers, when they receive an Ayurvedic postpartum Abhyanga, feel the same way um, because you really <laughs> need that work so, so much that um, you have profound effects from that. And so that was my very first touch in with Ayurvedic postpartum care was at Singala Bianga. And at that time, this friend recommended that I, you know, take that path of being an Ayurveda. Um, but I just had a baby and at that time I wasn't ready. Um, but yes, so back to the question as I first got into massage in Abhyanga back in 2000, 2001. Um, and I became a massage therapist in 2005. And that was to complement my um, Panchakarma training so that I could be do my practices legally as well. And so that's how I first got into it. And then it wasn't until 2011 when Isha Oaks came to the Grass Valley area that I did the actual Ayurveda training. Awesome. So that's when you started. Um, is that when you started incorporating the Abhyanga for Mamas? Um, into your professional practice? Yes, yeah, it was in 2011 um, when I actually received the training from Isha. That's when I started um, doing our Ayurveda work in Ayurvedic postpartum care in Abhyanga. Awesome, and could you tell us a little bit about some of your first experiences with providing the Abhyanga for mamas and like, what did you love about it and what did you learn from that time? Yeah. Well, one experience that really sticks out for me um, was actually I was on a vacation in Kauai, in Hawaii, and there is a friend of a friend who, it was her second baby, and her first baby, she had an unassisted home birth that went terribly wrong, and um, she got, you know, had to get life-lighted to the hospital and all these things, and so her second baby, um, was also difficult. It, luckily, it wasn't that difficult, um, but she was really struggling. And I heard about this 
And so I decided to go over there and try to help her, offer some um, knowledge and support. And she was Japanese and spoke very little English. And um, I gave her postpartum and bianga, as well as gave her some advice uh, through a translator for her diet and everything. Um, and she was so incredibly grateful. You know, it's it's hard to convey necessarily, you know, how the, for a mama, how they're feeling and also how you're feeling at the time. Um, but it was beautiful and profound. And I, I got many thanks. And later on, actually, um, I got the surprise package in the mail of this really beautiful letter, um, just, just thanking me and all the ways that I helped them, as well as this really sweet, um, purse made out of coconut fiber that she gave me but um yeah that was a very profound experience for her and also for me and seeing the benefits even just one single postpartum abhyanga can give and then for the mama seeing those benefits for herself being able to take that on um, and give self abhyanga regularly Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, what do you what do you love most about Abhyanga in general for for moms, for moms, actually? <laughs> what I love most about Abhyanga is the amazing benefits and success for postpartum healing that I see. Um, you know, I do Ayurvedic postpartum care, so also not only Abhyanga, but, you know, specialized cooking and herbs and consulting. And I really see the Abhyanga as really the key to a very strong postpartum recovery for moms. And I love being able to provide them to be able to give to them so that they can receive. Um, because as mothers, it's just a constant giving, constant giving. And to have a mama be able to receive that way. And um, so the Sanskrit for um, oiling is sneha. And sneha means love. And so to be able to just wash over a mama with love, <laughs> with liquid love, um, physically with the oil, and then of course with your, your heart and spirit as a practitioner um, is something that I, I love so much. And I see incredible benefit and success in mama's postpartum healing from Abhyanga. That's so beautiful. Um, and do you usually provide the Abhyanga and teach mamas how to provide it um, for themselves, or is it usually one or the other? I usually do both. Um, I do focus on in home care and doing giving mamas Abhyanga, um, but I also teach them how to do it. And yeah, I would say mostly I, I provide Abhyanga for mothers, um, which if that's at all possible, it's, you know, it's, it's a very different experience than um, giving Abhyanga to yourself. And I think the biggest difference is that giving and receiving, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so being able to receive from it, from a, a loving practitioner and being able to just fully rest and relax and receive um, is, is very profound. Um, and of course, if most mamas will not have that opportunity, so then of course doing self abhyanga is the next best option. And there's a ton of benefits for just abhyanga as well, whether it's um, by a practitioner or whether it's self-given. And a lot of those benefits come directly from the oil, especially if you can do an Ayurvedic, you know, medicated oil like Bala Ashwagandha, um, but even just a plain sesame oil that's warm. Um, it has an immense benefits 
for a mama, including, um, you know, stress relief, cortisol reduction, hormone balancing, grounding, being able to sleep better. There's, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, yeah, I would, if at all possible, having a practitioner to give a young guys is what I believe in, what I'm trying to um, help move forward by, you know, teaching Abhyanga. Awesome. And I'm, I'm really curious, in your years of practice, have you ever had a, a partner or another family member or loved one get involved with providing Abhyanga for a mama? I have, yes. Um, a husband doing that, for sure. Um, but not very often. Um, mm -hmm. So one one thing that I find with um, mamas and abhyanga is at least the mamas that I'm working with um, when I'm the practitioner giving the abhyanga. When I'm not there, they don't really do it. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and I I check in after I'm gone. You know, because whether I'm there for a month or whether I'm there for a week, you know. I like to check in with them um, afterwards and see how they're doing. And, and that's something that I feel is important um, to try to convey to mamas is, you know, if you are going to be, if you're going to have to give yourself a Bianca, um, you know, it's all about like a self-love practice and having a regular time of day that you do that. Um, you know, having a routine that's helpful for being able to actually make it happen because that's the thing is after you give birth, you, you know, there's just so much going on that it's, it's really hard to find time for yourself. So having time set aside to make that happen is, is an important aspect of your postpartum care. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, scheduling it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so kind of along those same lines, is there any advice you like to share with moms to help them make the most out of their Abhyanga experience, whether it's practitioner given or self given? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best advice I would give a mama who is having practitioner given, I mean, honestly, self given as well, um, is if you can have someone that is taking care of your baby while you're having the massage, um, that makes a really, really big difference. And I would say in my personal experience, I would say maybe 75% of the women have the baby in the room, even if I do tell them that. And sometimes that's just because they don't have anyone um, to watch the baby, um, or maybe they've chosen not to make that a priority to find someone or, whatever the reason, um, but my personal experience with that is that, you know, if you have the baby in the room, then your energy is going out to the baby every single noise that they make. And it makes a really big difference as far as um, being able to fully surrender and receive. Um, one thing that I do, my little secret trick that's really great actually, um, is this other Ayurvedic treatment called Karna Purana, which is filling the, the ear with oil and warm oil. And so I do that almost in the beginning of the massage. So then it, it, it's a, a sensory deprivation with many wonderful benefits. So then everything gets drowned out in the room and then it, it gives the mother an easier opportunity to go within herself and be able to focus on her own healing. So um, I really love that technique as well. And then for self abhyanga, I would say the scheduling of that and making that a, a real priority in your postpartum care and even just having a postpartum care plan and just sticking to that is probably the most important. Um, and using bala ashwagandha oil, um, 
adds significant benefits to your recovery and strength and always making sure that the oil is warm. I personally uh, recommend a baby bottle warmer. It's a really thing, easy way. You can just plug it in and you can even get one that has an adjustable knob. And that's a really easy way to just press a button and then make sure that you have warm oil because I feel like that's another thing that people um, will just be like, eh, not do is warming up the oil, which makes a really big difference. <laughs> that's super great advice. And I will share briefly that I received the oil in the ears <laughs> treatment mm -hmm. with my recent sacred window. And um, at first, <laughs> the woman giving it to me was like, well, would you like some oil in your ears? And like, that sounds kind of weird, but I felt open to it and I loved it. And so every time after that, when she asked, I'm like, you don't even have to ask me, just do it. It's, it was so nice. It's like a really cozy uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so are there any contraindications to postpartum abhyanga, like any time when a mama should not be doing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you end up having a cesarean birth, then I would say seven days um, recovery time before having or giving yourself a bianga, especially around the incision, you wanna be careful um, to not have too much oil there for the healing aspect or to you know, prevent any healing. Um, and then also if you have a fever or some severe congestion um, or any other serious medical conditions, I would you know, contact your doctor before um, going forward with a bianga. Awesome. Um, and have you noticed any longer term impact or benefits to, uh, well, see, I want to ask that question, but I'm also wondering, like the moms you've worked with have probably received multiple aspects of your care or of a protocol that you suggest. Um, so you can choose if you want to answer it, like in regards to long term impact of Abhyanga versus like having a Ayurvedic um, postpartum care protocol. Um, but yeah, have you seen any longer term impacts with that? Um, so, I mean, I've had clients that I've only done a Bianga with mm -hmm. and not done other aspects of the care, um, like cooking and herbs and consulting. And then I've had the full package. And of course, if you're getting the full Ayurveda package with the very delicious, wonderful, special foods and herbs and, you know, having me there to talk you through anything. Or, of course, that you're going to get the most benefit out of that. Um, but like I said, I believe that the Abhyanga, more than any of those things, besides maybe the actual physical support of be being there with a the mother to listen to her and to just be there heart to heart with somebody day in and day out um, that actually has amazing benefits as well but um the abhyanga is the most beneficial and yes i've i have a mother that i've worked with three out of her four babies and the first time was shortly after i received my ayurveda training and so that was i worked with her for about a week and then the second time it was two weeks <laughs> this last time was a month and you know because she herself could see the benefits of of that and looking back in her own care and seeing um the the holes in the care and what happened for her you know um she particularly was you know she's a very highly functioning individual and you know would go back to work and things like that she's a nurse and um but she had a lot of anxiety and depression and things like that. And so that's why this time, <laughs> the third try, um, she had me there for an entire month. And um, I, the benefits were really obvious. And even when I left, um, I went back to her after Christmas vacation, but I was gone for two weeks. And it was amazing and kind of a bummer how things just went downhill really fast um, 
not because of me, but just because of the care, not, you know, she didn't do her abhyanga, suddenly she has mastitis and, you know, all these things because the abhyanga, you work around your breasts also. And so that helps um, lactation, but also just keeping the flow going so you don't end up with anything like mastitis. Um, but so as far as that's, I would say even more uh, shorter term and longer term, shorter term being, you know, you can, you can see the actual benefits of it. And then when you have it, when you don't have it, but also the longer term of, you know, throughout her childbearing, you know, career, um, she has seen the longer term benefits and what she, what she had and also what she didn't have. Um, as far as that. And I would say that overall getting a Bianca, I mean, there is just a ton of benefit throughout your, you know, existence of <laughs> being a mother, because, you know, once you have, you have a baby, it's, you lose so many fluids and, you know, there is just so much nourishment that needs to be reintroduced to the body and oil, especially high quality sesame oil with lots of rejuvenating, strengthening herbs really gives that, your body the boost that it needs in order to just regain your vitality and strength, which you know, giving birth is a very powerful and intense experience and you lose a lot of fluids through the birth and through nursing and, and you can't really get those uh, fluids back just by drinking water. You really need to oil, oil the body and inside and out. And so doing this external oleation through a bianga really helps you to rejuvenate the body to the max that you need in order to really have that strength to move into the next phase of your life in a very strong and healthy way. Mm, yeah, that's, oh, that's beautiful. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us on this topic today? I guess the main thing is that I really, I really want this Abhyanga, postpartum Abhyanga work to become commonplace in America um, and for this conversation to be happening in communities all around the United States and beyond because there isn't really much of a conversation about postpartum care happening. Um, you know, our culture focuses mostly on prenatal care and, you know, especially when you have your first baby, you don't, you just don't know until you, the baby's there. And then at that point, it's just kind of too late is what I see in a lot of um, my personal experiences as a doula where once the baby is there, all bets are off and it's really hard to make anything else happen. And so having um, a postpartum conversation and having some planning before the baby arrives is really key in order for moms to really get the care that they need. Um, but also just having that conversation happening so that people even know that postpartum care is a thing and that Ayurvedic postpartum care is a thing, and that Ayurveda has been providing natural postpartum healing practices for who knows, for thousands of years. And they have a lot of tools, and they're really simple tools, you know, like healing through food, healing through massage, things that almost anyone can do, you know, even if you don't have a practitioner, even, you know, just learning some basic things. It's amazing how profound the effects are during that time. They're really profound. And so what I really want to see, I want to see more practitioners offering this work for mamas so that they have that opportunity to receive in that very deep way that they deserve so that they in turn can have all of the energy and strength that they need 
to give to their babies and give to their families so that we can raise the next generation of very empowered, beautiful, healthy individuals. Yeah. Awesome. I'm actually tearing up. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Um, You said that so well, and I'm really excited for people to hear this. And um, I will leave notes along with this talk, but would you like to just share how people can get in touch with you and learn more about your work? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, You can get in touch with me through my my website, my blog, which is shaktikare.com. Um, also, you could email me at amea, A-M-E-Y-A, at shaktikare.com. Um, I'm always open. I'm easy to get a hold of through email, and um, I'm always open to train people. So all I really need is just four people minimum, and I will do a training. So give me a call, shoot me an email, message me through my um, website, check out all the free information that I have. I have a postpartum planner ebook on my website that um, outlines all of the essential postpartum care practices that need to happen for a mama um, and lots of other wonderful guides and information on there that are free and just just trying to get the word out and really get this work off the ground and just <laughs> have, have our mamas being healed and healing themselves and inspiring practitioners to help this work move forward. Awesome. Yay. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. It was so lovely connecting with you. Thank you so much, Nina. Mm-hmm. <laughs>